I don't know if anybody... It says there's two viewers. I can't see who they are. Yep, that's silly. I guess that means they're not logged in. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining in. If there's only two people here, that's fine by me because it's still a party if there's only two attendees. We're going to be playing Oblivion. I have set this up so that each player, and I'm using all five heroes, is a different line of custom heroes. So player one is my stuff, starting with Applejack. Player two is Venture Brothers, starting with the Venture Brothers. Player three is Union City, starting with the Green Death. Player four is Buffy, starting with Xander. I've also put the DC heroes up there because they're going to be necessary. And player five is everything else, starting with Guntar. I am only including heroes that have actually appeared on my stream before, and not all of them, like... Uh, uh, Lacuna and the goalie will not be showing up because they don't have full arted decks. Speaking of arted decks, Fauna was not going to show up, but literally this morning, awesome person Meat gave me a fully arted deck for him. Unfortunately, I had him change something and I went and changed the deck image myself like 10 minutes ago and it's not loading properly, so you're not going to get to see it. I'll have to make sure to include him on a video at some point in the future. But we're also playing with custom environments. Uh, we're starting in Castle Underbite in Battle Zone 1 and Odyssey station in battle zone 2 our remainders are sunnydale graveyard the everfree forest and the principality of verandava this is probably going to take a few hours for no reason other than i'm going to be reading out a lot of stuff because i've only played oblivion a half dozen times i've only won the game once i don't expect to win this but i always run my videos with an eye towards the viewers having about as much understanding of sentinels as i do so i'll be reading out all the oblivion stuff but I'll be reading out all the Oblivion stuff. I will probably not be reading out as much of the custom stuff as I usually do. It will depend on how well I know the character, which is varying from character to character. Oh, and the way that I'm running this, too, not only is each hero a specific type of custom deck, but when a hero is knocked out, I will immediately switch to their variant if they have one. I've got the variants set up around the board for those what have them. I'm starting, I should mention, with the Green Death because I don't think that his ability to switch his own variants is going to play very nicely with Oblivion, so we're getting him out of the way quickly. Once a hero runs out of variants, I will go to another hero in that category. If I run out of heroes in a category, which a Union City, my stuff, are definitely going to run out first, then I will go to the others up here, and once I'm done with that, then it will be Cauldron Hero, Sentinel's Hero, alternating and we'll keep up with that now granted this is 29 heroes to start with it's entirely possible i won't lose all of them we'll see okay so start of the game i had uh, the primary objective is our shield so oblivion is immune to damage we have void soul in battle zone one is our scion when an objective is flipped in either battle zone add a token to this card i've actually put the tokens on it and we'll be removing them instead because i like doing that better when we remove four tokens it flips and he moves to the other battle zone and we've got his standee up here on literally on the battle zone card that's that's what he's standing on is the first battle zone card all the hero tokens are up here so we can see where everybody is so we're starting in the bottom left corner with union city and then going around clockwise in a weird fashion that's fine it's just to keep things in some semblance of an order got the oblivion deck down here the aeon men deck the scion deck our second scion is sanction Ooh. Ooh, okay, nice, thank you. She says, when the Scion trash is shuffled in the Scion deck, flip this card. Whenever objective is moved to a hero play area or flipped in a hero play area, discard the top card of the Scion deck. Well, that'll be interesting since we're mostly trying to do missions here. When this card is destroyed, each player may move up two cards in their trash to their hand, then remove the card from the game. End of the villain turn, discard the top card of the Scion deck, then this card regains three HP and deals the hero target the lowest HP, three energy damage. She's annoying, but I think I might have everybody but the green death move over there. Other things, let's see. We've got the Scion reserve over here i have actually shuffled it this will be my first time playing oblivion with a shuffled scion reserve usually i stack it but sanction was the first one that came out and that's fine by me all right void soul says whenever an objective card is flipped this card deals itself two psychic damage and then flips don't want it to flip. When this card is destroyed, each hero target gains 3 HP, then removes this card from the game. And the villain turn, the hero target the lowest HP deals each non villain target 2 psychic damage and 2 infernal damage. If no damage was dealt this way, play the top card of the Scion deck. The inevitable destruction card at the start of Oblivion's turn, if there are 12 or more devastation tokens on this card, remove 12 devastation tokens from this card, then remove the environment in the battle zone with Oblivion from the game. Following the environment removal rules on the top card of the Scion reserve. Let's go read that. Whenever an environment is removed from the game, follow these steps. Remove all that environment's cards from the game, regardless of whether they are in play, the deck, the trash, or even the other 
the battle zone. Move Oblivion to that battle zone. I can't remember why you have to do that, but there's a certain way that that will actually need to happen. Normally he just moves there and then takes it out. Put one of the set-aside environment decks in that environment area. If there is no set-aside environment deck left to replace the removed deck, the multiverse has been destroyed. Game over. And then he hits everybody for 20 damage. Stir the villain turn. If there are more scions than heroes, add a devastation token to the inevitable destruction card for each scion here. That says the, the inevitable destruction card. I hope that's not actually on the physical cards, but I'll bet it is. Whenever scion is removed from the game, remove a devastation token from the inevitable destruction card. Whenever a hero is incapacitated, add a devastation token to the inevitable destruction card. I tend to forget that. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna die. <laughs> Oblivion himself says this booklet is Oblivion's villain character card. Start of the game, follow the Oblivion game setup rules in the Oblivion rulebook. To begin the game, turn to the next page and set his HP to 10,000. So we'll go ahead and do that. The start of Oblivion's turn. Move the countdown token one space along the countdown track towards zero. Oblivion is immune to damage dealt by Oblivion. Increase damage dealt by Oblivion by H. When the Oblivion shield card is removed from the game, each player in the game may draw a card. Remove X devastation tokens from the inevitable destruction card where X is the number under the countdown token. Then move the countdown token to six. Shuffle Oblivion's trash into Oblivion's deck and turn to the next page. When the countdown token reaches zero, or if Oblivion would be destroyed, follow the environment removal rules in the top card of the Cyan Reserve, move the countdown token to five, and then turn to the next page. Whenever Cyan is removed from the game in either battle zone, put the bottom card of the Cyan Reserve in that battle zone, so we don't need to fight Cyans right now. Then of Oblivion's turn, play the top three cards of the Aeon Men deck in the other battle zone, then he destroys any Aeon Men here. Then add a Devastation token to the Inevitable Destruction card. So everything's bad, nothing is good. Our goal, should we choose to accept it, and we do, is to gain missions, and fulfill them. So we're starting with, and this is going to be really annoying the entire time, starting with the Red Menace. I'll read him once someone actually picks him up. So we go Oblivion's turn, each of the hero turns, then Environment 1, Scion 1, Environment 2, Scion 2. And our hero reminder card says, at the start of your turn phase, first you may move your hero from one battle zone to the other, then you may do one of these six things. Take an objective. If you have no objectives in your play area, move the top card of the mission deck to your play area. Swap out an objective. Put an objective in your play area under the mission deck and move the top card of the mission deck to your play area. Trade an objective. Trade an objective from your play area for an objective in another player's play area. Shuffle. Shuffle the mission deck. Use an incapacitate ability on one of the hero cards in your play area, or regain a reward from under an incapacitated hero character card. And I have to remember that if a reward gets shuffled into your deck somehow, you have to go find it if you're incapacitated and put it under the incapacitated character card. That's really annoying. That said, it's actually better than the alternative, which is to leave it there and then hope you draw it. That doesn't happen. Here we go, a wassailing. Oblivion, let's see, starts us off by moving the countdown token, and then he plays card. Things can only get worse from here. Absorb energy. Oblivion deals each target eight energy damage. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. Poor Xander, he's gonna die so hard. Add X devastation tokens to the inevitable destruction card where X is H minus number of hero character cards dealt damage this way. That's none. End of his turn, play the top three cards of the Aeon Men deck in the other battle zone, and then he destroys the Aeon Men here, and then we get a devastation token. All right, so my plan is to move everybody but the Green Death to battle zone two, deal with the Aeon Men, and continue to get objectives. We'll leave Green Death up above so that there's no extra extra devastation tokens. So we got an Aeon Thrall, which deals some damage, and if Oblivion destroys it, each villain target gains 2 HP. We have an Aeon Warrior, and the villain turn deals 2 melee and 2 energy damage, and if Oblivion destroys it, he hits the highest for 7. That's not good. And this is the Aeon Vassal. Then the villain turn, this card deals the 3 hero targets, the highest HP, 1 energy damage each. If Oblivion destroys it, we get a devastation token. That one is actually the most important one to get rid of. Well, other than the Aeon Locus, which is worse. And then we get a devastation token, and that's it. So our goal right now is to complete 4 missions. So first, I think he's going to start his turn by shuffling the deck. Oh, form the Mecha Knight. That's hard to do, though. Shoot. Okay, so three bits of advice about Oblivion. Number one, you will lose heroes. It is a good idea to start with a hero that you don't really care about. Start with a variant you don't really care about. Number two, you win by completing missions. So at the start of the game, you want to just complete missions. Number three, if you can do something, do it. Doing things is better than trying to set up for, you know, maybe being able to do things. That could be useful. We'll go ahead and start with Hero of the Underworld. Increase 
His damage, Dalton the Villain targets by one. Vigilante Justice, he deals a target one. Two toxic damage, if it has two or fewer HP, destroy it. Now he'll just hit Void Soul for two. I mean, we don't want to kill the Scions because they're just going to come back, but if I get rid of Void Soul, it won't be the worst thing ever. And draw a card. One other thing I had to do before setting this up was change the play zones because red, blue, green, and yellow were all flipped. Do I really want this one? No, I don't. Uh, boy. Okay, and the Venture Brothers are going to move to Battle Zone 2. And they're going to shuffle the mission deck, and it's still form the Mechanite. God damn it. Okay, that's not one you can do with the team split up anywhere. All right, I'm going to play Brock Student. I actually want to use Brock Student. Okay, Venture Twins deal a target 2 melee damage. If that target has 3 or less HP, you may destroy it. If you do, also destroy this card. They will hit the Aeon Vassal for 2, and then destroy it, and destroy that, and draw a card. Sacrifice plays are the name of the game in this game mode. And I got another Brock Student to replace it. Okay, Applejack will take Mechanite. At the end of your turn, each player may reveal the top card of their deck. They may discard or draw that card. If each card is discarded this way, flip this card. But like I said, if not everybody is in the same play area as you and she is moving to Battle Zone 2, then it doesn't actually matter. What do we got? Apple Buck Season would be a good way to start. Yeah. Deal each tree one melee damage, deal each non-hero target two. And oh yeah, let's see. Getting objectives. So that discards the top card of the Scion deck. And then she'll go ahead and Apple Buck this poor loser and draw a card. Okay, Guntar. Classical Laboratory. Good idea. Reveal cards to the top of your deck until two jars are revealed. Shuffle the other revealed cards into your deck. You may put one of those jars into play. If you do, drain one from each jar, put into play this way, otherwise put them in your hands. Powders, minerals, dusts, or sav serin oils. Okay, excellent. Place five on it, and then I may drain two to play a card. I first have to drain one, so it starts with three. No, it starts with four. Long cards ignore this card. Well, that's something. Oh, I can put any of the jars into play. Okay, well, screw that. I'm going to put the other one into play, too. Powders, dust, and minerals. Thank you. Starts with seven, and it turn goes down to six. So let's see, I can drain two from this to play a card. I think I'll do that. Metrocalculogician. Whenever you evaluate X or Z variables on any of your cards, you may add one. And then I can drain two from this to play a card. Draw two, play maximum power. Reveal five cards on top of your deck. Select a color, add X of that color to one jar, where X is the number of cards revealed that color. Discard the revealed cards, you may play a card. I might just go ahead and play his whole damn hand. It's unfortunate, however, because I am not accomplishing anything. So let's see, yellow, red, red, yellow, red. Yeah, I'll take the two yellow. Discard the revealed cards. Oh, I can actually add one extra because of Metrocalculogician. Fantastic. And then I can play a card, Powder Maniac. I reveal six cards from the top of your deck. Guntar, why are you so Guntar? All right, add X red to a jar where X is the number of red revealed plus one, or it could be plus two. So let's see, green, 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 red, yellow. So I can add three and then drain any number of green or yellow to take as many revealed cards of those colors into your hand. Okay, two, I'm taking both of them. Drain two, discard the rest. I mean, I like I said, I haven't really accomplished anything, but that was actually a lot of stuff. Draw two cards, reveal card from his hand. Um, I may add two of the revealed cards, colors to one jar, discard the revealed card. Do, do, do. I'll drop the collapsible laboratory for two yellow and draw a card. All right, that was his turn. Xander, what do you actually do? Oh yeah, and I forgot to, damn it, this is the thing I always do. I forgot to have him move, forgot to have him take a mission, so I'm going to have Xander move, and what do we have here? Oh, the last wager. That's fun. Let's do that one. So he gets that, and then we discard the top card of the Scion deck outside the spotlight. Whenever a card would cause you to play a card, use a power, or draw a card, you may instead have another player gain that benefit. And then we'll go ahead and use his power. Who wants to use their base power now? Actually, probably Hank and Dean. I'm going to look for a Dean card. Support characters are good at supporting other support characters. Characters. Otherwise, you don't want to waste a lot of time on setup. All right, and what do we do with this? At the end of your turn, each player may discard a card. Any player who discarded a card may draw a card. If two or more one shots were drawn this way, flip this card. If no cards are discarded this way, shuffle this card in the mission deck. Okay, so everybody discard one, and the way I think this is supposed to work is everybody discards one first, and then you draw until you draw two one shots. So if the first two players both draw one shots, the other two are out of luck. But we'll go ahead and have everybody discard something, or rather, everybody who is currently in this place play area. All right, drawing cards. One shot. Ongoing. Ongoing. Come on, Xander. Ongoing. Damn it. Okay, so nothing happens. And it is time for Castle Underbite. Wonderland Conscripts. In the, the environment turns card deals the X highest HP hero targets two melee damage each X is number of environment targets in place, so they hit the green death for two. He gonna die. He gonna die hard. It will be a glorious heroic sacrifice on his part. Void Soul does nothing until the end. Okay, Scion deck. Red Minds and Souls. Sign with the lowest HP deals the two hero targets the highest HP, two select damage each. Each hero dealt damage this way destroys one of the non-character cards. Okay, so he takes two and he loses his card. 
This is going to be real rough on him. End of the villain turn, the hero target lowest HP deals each non-villain target two psychic damage into infernal damage. So he kills the Underland Conscripts, and that's actually it. Off to Odyssey Station, the environment's first turn. Search the deck for one lock module, one malfunctioning system, and one rogue robot card and put them into play. Heroes do not actually damage the environment deck, whatever. Only the access denied text is active at this stage. Shuffle the other cards back in the deck. Proceed to the end of turn phase. Okay, so it doesn't play any other cards. Heroes do not actually damage the environment deck. Instead, their attacks, blah, blah, blah. Environment targets HP represents degree of control over the card between the villain and the heroes. As the environment targets lose HP, point shift from the die to the granite stack. All of the targets HP move to the granite stack, the heroes take control. So, in other words, it hits zero. Its axis grant effects a piece the axis denied. When villain damage to environment card life-wise moves HP between stack, but in reverse, from granted to denied. Okay, so I think it has to go all the way back up to full before it's denied again. Oh no, once all the HP moved to the axis granted stack, removed from the game, is have gained control of the card and can no longer be healed back up to move. Okay, so, end of turn. Start the environment turn, whatever. Start the environment turn, whatever. All hero targets heal at minus one HP. All villain targets heal at plus one HP. Okay, good to know. Sanction does nothing at the start of her turn. Wave of oppression destroy a non target target environment card. There aren't any. Technically, there's the setup card, because it doesn't say that it is either not in play or indestructible. Sign with the lowest HP deals each non-villain target two psychic damage. Okay, they're all at full, so that doesn't matter. One nice thing about doing custom heroes is I don't have to keep track of who is what's nemesis because oh boy they're shifting nemeses in this game end of the villain turn she discards the top card of scion deck heals three and hits somebody for three so she's back to full the hero target with the lowest hp poor xander and then this hits the highest for two and two that's applejack okay it's oblivion's turn unfortunately tear through reality move oblivion to the battle zone with the most hero targets hi oblivion how are you big guy oh boy oblivion deals each target seven energy and seven psychic damage everybody take 14. Ah uh, ha ha. Oh boy, he takes out the Aeon Warrior, which means he hits the highest for 9? That's Guntar. Okay, so Guntar's dead. And he doesn't have any variants, so unfortunately that's it for him. That's fine. He forgot to get a mission anyway. Oh, and Xander's dead too. And that's it for him, because he doesn't have any variants either. Oh boy, now we get to look at Xander's screaming face for the rest of the game as somebody tries to dig his freaking eye out. This goes, I believe, on the bottom of the mission deck, which is fine, and they will be replaced momentarily. Add a devastation token to the inevitable destruction card. Oh wait, he still has to hit her. She is his nemesis, so he hits her for 16 damage, and these all just heal back up to full, because they're already at full. Devastation token. End of the villain turn, three Aeon men in the other thing, and he's already destroyed the ones over here. They might all switch places. I don't want to be in the same place as him. Okay, there's an Aeon locus. End of the villain turn, each Aeon man other than this card regains a hit point. If no targets regain HP this way, play the top card of the Aeon men deck. And when he destroys the card, he moves to this battle zone and plays the top card of his deck. That's why Aeon Loki are really, really bad. And that's it for his turn. I think I'm going to have everybody move back, or I might... You know what? Okay, I'm going to have the Green Death move to Battle Zone 2. I'm going to have the Venture Brothers stay in Battle Zone 2. I'm going to have Applejack form the Mecha Knight, and then the other two can move. Speaking of the other two, it is now time to gain new heroes. So Xander will be replaced by Buffy. Guntar, you know, I'm still in it's hard to do stuff mode, so I'm going to pull Fauna out now because he's just not going to have a good time. He's got 24 HP. Yeah, that's not a good thing to have. It's really not. Okay, Green Death. Green Death is coming to join the party. He is taking whatever this is. I think that's Lucky Break. Yes, I could destroy an environment card. That would be good. Yeah, high speed chase. Let's search for the Emerald Death Mobile. I mean, he's not going to last very long, but if we can extend it by even a little bit, it'll be worthwhile. Yeah, and then I can destroy an environment card. You know what? I'm going to get rid of Operations because it's got a lot of HP and it's going to take us a while to get rid of it. Right. Power on the Emerald Death Mobile. Let's see. Reduce damage off the Green Death by non hero targets by one. You can play an ammo card on it. Oh, that's right. And when it's destroyed, it deals damage, so that's cool. Yeah, he'll go ahead and hit each non-hero target for one. See if we can gain control of those systems there. I really like Odyssey Station. Draw a card, and let's see. So, everybody's here. You may select a card in your hand, shuffle your deck, and reveal the top card of your deck. The real field card and the selected card share a keyword, play them both, then flip this card, if not discard them both. I don't feel like I'm going to play Poison Gas Pellets, so we'll do that. See if I can get a one-shot. It is a one-shot. Holy crap. Play them both. All right. Deal up to three targets, two toxic damage each, or one target, four toxic damage. Whoa. Boom. We gain control of 
that, and I'll hit that for two, and I'll hit Sanction for two. See? Missions make everything better. Haunting Laugh. The Green Death deals each villain target one psychic damage, ignoring any... Oh, on non-character card targets. Okay, fine. So he hits her for one. That's fine. That works. Then we get Lucky Break, which is fantastic. That's a great way to start. So, setback from alternate universe where he's basically Legacy. At the end of your turn, reveal a top card of your deck. Each player may play a card that shares a keyword with the revealed card, then put the revealed card into play. Holy shit. All right. One shot. It's more poison gas pellets. Okay. We'll take control of this system as well. So now, at the end of the environment turn, one hero regains three HP. At the end of the environment turn, one hero may use a power. This is going to be fantastic. Hit her for two. Well, I guess that should have gone into play afterwards. Let's see. Oh, what's this? Destroy an environment card. I don't want to destroy an environment card. I actually regret destroying the other environment card because we might have been able to take it out this round. Whatever. Undignified flailing. Deal a target two and one melee damage. Oh yeah, we remove a token from the shield. Excellent. Applejack can play a one-shot. I will play put him up and go looking for Winona. Uh, well, okay, now I guess it's possible that Sanction will deal two damage at some point. Fauna, do you have any one-shots? Yeah, we'll just start with mid-combat nap. He doesn't need the healing, but he could definitely use three cards. And Buffy, prepare for war sounds like a good idea. Two equipment cards, put one into play, one until the end of your next turn. Oh, okay, well, let's see what I get. Stake thrower and holy symbol. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm taking holy symbol and putting it into play because it's really freaking awesome. Some card. Increase radiant damage dealt by Buffy by one. First time each turn she's dealt damage by a target, she deals at target one radiant damage. Or should I say grand total of one radiant damage. Okay, and then he does the poison gas pellets and we're good. That was cool. Okay, Venture Brothers are staying put and they're taking this, which is... Ooh, Demand of the Gods. At the end of your turn, if at least eight cards are destroyed this turn, flip this card. If not, you may move this card to the hero's play area. Yeah, I... Hmm... I don't see that one happening, at least not on their time. Hey, does this have a thing? Start of your turn, you may destroy an ongoing card if you do destroy this card. Okay, don't have to do that yet. Might need to later. I'll just go ahead and play Brock Student again, and then we'll do Doc Student, play a one-shot. Destroy an environment card. We don't really need the one that heals us. That's just not going to be helpful right now. <laughs> just trust me. Reveal the top card of the environment deck and either replace or discard it. Oh, you know what? We can get rid of that one. We don't need the airlock, because that's one of the ones that incapacitates a hero, and those aren't fun. I can use a power on a hint card. Deal a target to melee damage. We'll just beat on sanction. I mean, right now I'm counting on her being a damage sponge. That's basically what's going on here. Oh, let's see. Demand of the Gods would have discarded a card. Card. Actually, Lucky Break would have discarded a Scion card as well. That's important, gotta keep up with it. I feel like moving Demand of the Gods up to Buffy. Because if anybody's going to kill five targets in one round, it's going to be her. All right, Applejack. I could grab the Red Menace if I wanted. I'm going to. It's not a great idea, but more is good. That discards the top card of the Scion deck. Okay, Cider Season. Two heroes gain two HP each. How much damage does he do? So she'll heal herself and the Venture Brothers for more or less no reason. She will Apple Buck. Not him. That would be dumb. Hit Sanction. Draw a card. All right, end of her turn. Reveal the top card of each hero deck. They may discard or draw the card. Each card's a discard. We're just discarding the top eight cards of everybody's deck because otherwise we'll never complete this. I'm not even looking at what they are because I don't care. Completing missions is more important than saving your stupid cards for later. All right, H targets were discarded this way. We lose a token, Sanction discards the top card of the deck, and we get the Mecha Knight Ultra Strike. Reward ongoing concept. Your hero deals X targets one lightning, one energy, one psychic, one sonic, and one melee damage. Where X is the number of cards on this card plus one. Admittedly, I will never get another card under that unless I decide to break the idealist out somewhere. But as it stands, that's five damage instead of her base power of two. Now, the Red Menace. First time this card is dealt damage, each turn deals source that damage, three fire damage. End of your turn, this card deals each non-villain target one fire damage. So, everybody take one. Green Death soaks it. Yay! Oh, and Buffy. Oh, jeez. Buffy hits him back for one radiant damage, which means he hits her for three fire damage. It's hard being the Slayer. Hero 4, Fauna, moves to Battle Zone 1. He's going to take... Oh, Filter Heist. This is a fun one. I like this one. What can he actually do? Well, he's only got the one gift, so we're going to play Modified HUD Goggles. When you discard a card, another player may draw a card. When a gift is destroyed, he may play a card. His power is Mascot. Discard two cards. He doesn't have anyone to support. Never mind. Skip his power. Draw a card. Like I said, this game is really rough on support heroes because essentially everything you do is divided in half in terms of is it actually useful. Okay, Filter Heist. End of your turn, you may reveal the top three cards of your deck. If you reveal at least three different keywords this way, discard the revealed cards to this card. If not, shuffle them into your deck. I like this one. I don't know that I've ever actually completed it, but we'll see here. And we get... One shot. Equipment gift limited. That one by itself has three keywords. So, Fauna wins the day, and he gets the Infinity Cannon. <laughs>
<laughs> because that's exactly what he needed. All right, that's one more token off the card. Sanction doesn't do anything because he moved out of her play area. That being said, it is Buffy's turn. What do we have for Thingy? Oh, create contraption. That would actually be really nice. Okay, she's going to move up there. We're going to see if we can give the Slayer a hair dryer. <laughs> yeah, fight alone. Okay, this will be cool. Increase damage dealt by Buffy by one till the end of your turn. Each other hero discards a card now. Hey, whenever he discards a card, another hero may draw a card. She's got her own pet deer cat thing. You may play a card. Oh, wooden stake. Yeah, I'll take that. That'll give me another power. Okay, wooden stake says first time each turn Buffy deals melee damage to a target. She deals that target zero, one radiant damage. And the power is Buffy deals a target two melee damage. So who could use two melee damage and one, yeah, the locust. Hit that for three. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Void Soul hits himself for two and flips because Fauna got the Infinity Cannon. Reduce damage dealt to this card by two. This card is destroyed and doesn't matter. End of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target and the player with the most rewards three infernal damage and then flips. Okay, actually, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to She draws a card. She did not destroy five cards this turn, so that doesn't matter. Create Contraption. At the end of your turn, each player may discard any number of cards. Whenever an equipment card is discarded, add a token to this card. When there are six tokens on this card, flip this card. Okay, let's go ahead and give that a six token counter. Equipment card. Does he have any equipment? He does not. Does she have any equipment? She does. He's going to discard a card so that she can draw a card. All right, and she's just going to discard Stake Thrower and take a token off of that. I was hoping to get more equipment, but whatever. Off to Castle Underbite. Kind of forget about it. The Royal Wedding. Increase all damage dealt by one. The end of the environment turn, if this card did not enter play this turn, destroy this card. Okay, so that'll be around for a while. Oh, but! Okay, start of the villain turn, destroy hero ongoing card. We don't have any. Cool. I'm fine with that. Okay, he plays a card. Relentless Hunter, sign with the lowest HP, deals a hero target with the highest HP, 5 melee damage. That is Buffy. She hits him back for 0 radiant damage, unfortunately. If no damage was dealt this way, okay, that's fine. And the villain turn, this card deals each hero target and the player with the most rewards, 3 infernal damage each. That is Fauna. Then he flips back over, and then he does his thing. Oh yeah, and that should have been increased by 1. That should have been increased by 1, which was not enough for her to actually hit him, so it doesn't matter. The hero target with the lowest HP deals each non-villain target 2 three psychic and three infernal damage that is fauna so six to her she hits him for two and he hits himself for six youch but damage was dealt so that's fine each aeon man other than this card regains a hit point darn it no hp was regained so play the top card of the aeon man deck aeon thrall the vassal deals the three highest to each buffy hits it for two why couldn't that have gone off first and then the thralls both hit buffy for three and she hits them both for two ouch they're not going to last very long. Security Station. Start of the environment, turn this card, deals energy damage to all hero targets, restore 5 HP to all sealed module denied stacks. Okay. So, somebody can use a power out of the three bottom peoples. They don't have any one-shots. That's not terribly useful. I'm going to have Applejack use the Mecha Knight on, on this thing. Five damage to that. That's a good start. Could be better. Could be worse. All right. Sanction plays a card. Terrible burden. Move Oblivion to this battle zone. Already ahead of you. The bottom card of the sign reserve in this battle zone. God damn it. And we get Progeny. Oh no. I'm used to him showing up late in the game. This is bad. <laughs> that Scion deals each hero target one projectile and one fire damage. Okay, so let's see. The Venture Brothers make it through. Applejack is taken out. He goes back on the bottom of the thing. So now this time I actually have to put everything into the deck because she's got a variant. And that's, that's a good thing. Green Death soaks it. Emerald Death Mobile takes two and Lucky Break takes two. End of the villain turn. Discard the top card of the Scion deck. She heals three. Hits the lowest for three. Okay, that takes out the Venture Brothers. They actually did okay. They they killed an Aeon Man. If I'd thought of it, I could have had them kill the Emerald Death Mobile, but it's too late. All right, Progeny says at the start of the villain turn, if there are five or more tokens on this card, this card, and this card is destroyed, doesn't matter. First time this card is dealt damage each turn, add a token to this card. At the end of the villain turn, add a token to this card. This card deals each hero target in the play area with the most rewards, X energy damage, or X is the number of tokens on this card. So, nobody's got any rewards. No, that's not true. He hits everybody over here. So, Lucky Break takes one. Green Death soaks it. The Emerald Death Mobile is destroyed, and it deals a target two melee and two fire damage. Okay, so that's four to him, and then another token. When he flips is actually when he gets really nasty. And now it's, it's Oblivion's turn. Counting down to three. Nobody saying anything. That's fine. He plays card. Move the countdown token one space towards zero. I hate this card. Why does he need a card 
It helps him win faster. The target with the lowest HP deals each non-villain target other than itself two energy damage. And if any hero character cards were dealt damage this way, move those heroes to the other battle zone. Oh wait, first I need to pull up my promos. So Venture Twins 1 through 14 are coming in, and Apple Jewel. Oh, at least she got raised to sparring. That's something. All right, so who's got the lowest HP? He, yeah, it's the green death. Okay, so he deals each non-villain target other than himself two energy damage. And hero character cards dealt damage this way get moved. So that'll be Applejack and the Venture Brothers. On the upside, he hits that for two, so that's something. We're going to have to bring somebody back over there to keep them from generating tokens. Three Aeon Men, and I think I forgot to do an Inevitable Destruction token last turn. No, actually, no, I didn't. This is only round three. We get a Thrall, and a Thrall, and a Vassal. Fine, whatever. Gee, now we're in a good position for the Ennead card to happen. There are no Aeon Men for him to destroy, so Devastation token. Okay, Green Death. Still sticking around. He's fine. Green Smoke Cloud. Green Death is dealt damage you destroy this card to redirect that damage non-hero target with lowest HP. He will... Oh, jeez. Let's work on the environment. Uh, hitting Progeny is just a losing... Yeah. Draw a card. Each player may play an equipment or ammo. Well, he's not gonna. And then that goes into his trash. Unfortunate. I forgot to have him do a thing at the start of his turn. Well, whatevs. Let's see. How does this work again? End of your turn. She has to have destroyed five cards. Doesn't have any area damage. Well, I guess they're gonna take this. They're gonna stay in Battle Zone 1. True hero in the end. At the end of your turn, each hero may deal himself two psychic damage. Whenever a hero takes damage this way, add a token to this card. And then when there are H plus two tokens on this card, flip this card. So, seven. Okay, what do we got? Okay, all damage is plus one. I think Undignified Flailing is actually a good idea right now. Deal a target three melee damage, and then deal a target two melee damage. I'm actually just gonna take that guy out, because we don't want him around. And then two to one of these thralls. If I can get everything down to like two or three HP, there will be a better chance of of taking out multiple targets, but damn it. Ugh, oof. There's no way to do it. All right, discard the top card of my deck, and then I can use a power for each. Oh man, and this was supposed to be changed. Hey, Delpha Phage, what were we supposed to change this to? Well, for each ongoing in your card activated start of turn effect or its power, then shuffle your trash in your deck. I'm gonna play this the way it's supposed to be played, so I'm gonna actually get to deal up to two targets, three projectile damage each, four projectile damage each, and then shuffle my trash into my deck and draw a card. Okay, AJ is moving back over here. Number one. Number two, she's definitely reclaiming the Mechanite. That's real important. And number three, raise this barn. So, oh, there it right is on top. There it right is on top. I are good, and he can draw a card. Do I have any trees to play? I do not have any trees to play. Okay, so she discards a card, and the player may play a card with matching. So ongoing limited, one shot, or one shot, or she can do five damage to the airlock. I'm going to go ahead and set the trend. Discard a raise this barn, which will let him play reload and keep going. Search your deck for an equipment card, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck, you may play a card, and the green death regains 2 HP. I put him out here because I figured he was going to, like, die fast, and he's been <laughs> very resilient. Yeah, I'll go ahead and play the Steric, and then he heals too. It's not going to last, but draw two cards... Fauna. What's he got? There's immune to damage type of your choice to the start of your next turn. Hmm. Useful. I think I would rather take... Ooh, it's the Chronoist. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so he, he does not have a whole lot of hero worship because that'll actually be useful. When another hero player discards a card, Fauna regains a hit point. That's been happening. And then he's going to use the Infinity Cannon, I think. Either draw a card or play an ammo card. That's... Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, I'll draw a card and deal how much? Yeah, five energy damage to White Soul. <laughs> Just because it's fun. Draw a card and then, end of your turn, each player may discard any number of cards and shuffle any number of hero trash piles into their decks. If at least 12 cards are shuffled into decks this way, flip this card. Okay, he's got seven, she's got four, and they've got none. So he will discard a card, let Buffy draw a card, and then we will shuffle her trash of four cards and his trash of eight cards into their decks. Flip this. He's got 14 HP. Void Soul flips because he's a dumbass. Oh, and that gets us our last token off the primary objective. It flips. Reduce damage dealt to Oblivion by two. If Oblivion is dealt five or more damage in a single turn, remove this card from the game. That's going to be a tall order with this party. I don't know who's going to be able to do that. Who can do seven damage in a go or like three and three? I don't know. Well, we'll have to figure that out. Fauna might actually be able to do it. At the end of your turn, you and one other player may each play a card. If neither of you do, this card deals a target three melee and three energy damage. Oh yeah, captured sidekick. 
Villain and environment cards cannot be played. Immediately end your turn. Oh, sure, I'll do that. Discard your hand, destroy all gifts, and destroy this card. That'll be fun. That'll be a good last hurrah, assuming he doesn't last. She can play a card. Yeah, bait and hook. I don't want it to be the Scion deck, so it has to be the Aeon Man deck. Can't be Oblivion, because he's not over here. At the start of her turn, she can do some stuff. All right. Start of her turn. Use a power, gain 2 HP, increase next damage all by here by 2. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to use that incapacitated ability. Increase her next damage by 2. Fight alone. Increase damage dealt by Buffy by 1. Each other hero discards a card now. Let's drop that. He heals 1, and it doesn't really matter what he gets rid of because he's going to be discarding his hand. I'll let the Venture Brothers draw a card, and then she can play a card. I kind of want to hold on to that, but on the other hand, I'm trying to nuke for maximum damage here. Oh, right, and I forgot. Start of your turn, you may have Buffy deal a target for melee damage. Yeah, we're going to do that. So it'll be 6 reduced to 4, so that's three out of five and then she plays fight alone increase damage dealt by one strike the source deals a target two three melee damage so that's one putting it up to four and she can deal a target zero one two radiant damage that's not enough to get through it and then wooden stake two three melee damage one more and that will take out the shield remove that card from the game okay each player in the game may draw a card i want all scander to feel extremely proud right now because buffy did five damage to oblivion through his shield remove x devastation tokens from the inevitable destruction card where x is the number under the countdown token two i'll take it move it back to six which is great because otherwise it just goes back to five shuffle his trash into his deck and turn to the next page page three okay when you turn to this page he gets to 180 hp and then we remember that buffy actually had to be over here in order to deal him damage and that's fine he deals each non-villain target five energy damage and then plays the top two cards of the ann man deck here so six to her five to him and a token and then Applejack, Buffy, and the Green Death each take five. Oh, and Lucky Break. Oh, wait. I can destroy Green Smoke Cloud and redirect it to the non-hero target with the lowest HP, which is, unfortunately, this. That's back up to full. Well, she's not dead yet. She hits him for two Radiant Damage. Top two cards of the Aeon Man deck. Thrall and a Locus. All right, that was just one turn to this page. Let me go ahead and read him off now. At the start of his turn, he moves the countdown token one space towards zero. If he would be destroyed, each player in the game may draw a card. And basically, it's the same thing. You take him down to zero now, and you get the good ending. Or if the countdown token reaches zero, he destroys an environment, goes to five, and goes on to the next page. So you can actually get to his third page just by doing nothing. At the end of his turn, he deals each target five energy damage. If no damage is dealt to heroes this way, add five Devastation Tokens to the Inevitable Destruction card. Then if at least one battle zone does not have a Scion, put the bottom card of the Scion Reserve in a battle zone with no Scions. So now, killing Scions is worthwhile. We'll probably want to go kill Sanction just to get rid of her so that we have fewer things to kill. And that will also, you know, take a Inevitable Destruction Token off the card. She draws a card. No cards were destroyed. That was removed from the game... Green Death lost a card. Yeah, nothing actually happened. Who wants to discard equipment cards? Anybody? Here's one. She doesn't even have equipment, does she? Oh yeah, she does. We'll discard that. Discard a hat. That's two more tokens. She may not get that before she dies. Especially since she's right next to Oblivion. Yeah, in fact, she's gonna die. And Fauna didn't heal any because she left. And I think I was playing that whole turn wrong, but you know what? It doesn't matter because that happens a lot. All right, off to Castle Underbite. Oh, environment cards cannot be played, actually. So all that happens is the wedding goes away and then Void Soul can't play anything. So let's see, ongoings. It's the, him or the Venture Brothers. Okay, so Hero Worship to keep that in play. Thanks. Each hero target the player with the most rewards, three infernal damage each. That is him in the Chronoist. And he flips. Hero target with the lowest HP, Deals each non-villain target two psychic and two infernal damage. That is fauna. Yeesh. Damage was dealt, but it wouldn't matter if it hadn't been. Time for lots of damage. Three highest take one each. Two, 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 two. And then the three highest take one each. Yep, still higher than Chronoist, and then they all take one. That HP, it does not last. This card does one energy damage to all hero targets and restore five HP to all sealed modules. So Applejack and Green Death and Buffy, which she hits it back for one, but it doesn't matter because it heals itself. And we get Cargo Bay. 
A hero must discard a card for each card they wish to play each turn, so you must discard before you play. That needs to go. Okay, let's see. Start, start. He doesn't have five, so he doesn't flip. They can't play cards. End of turn, discard a card. She hits the lowest for three, which is Buffy. Unfortunately, we did not get the hairdryer. Now we can focus a little bit less on missions. It'll be more of a quality over quantity kind of thing. And that is unfortunately it for her. But hey, <laughs> she saved all of us. I can't argue with that. Good on you, Buffy. Progeny gets a token. He hits each hero target the player with the most rewards for four energy damage. That's, they're tied. Applejack will take that. And then that hits the highest for two and that heals him, but it plays the AI on my deck instead. Boo! Warrior hits the highest for two and two. That's still app. Okay, this is going to be a dangerous turn. First, I think I'll take Blue Beetle. Just start with the regular one, and then he's got a couple of variants, so that'll be good. All right, Oblivion moves the tracker down, and he gets to play a card, because he's not in the same play area as Fauna. The Abyss stares back. Add a Devastation Token to the Inevitable Destruction card, and play the top card of his deck. Add a Devastation Token to the Inevitable Destruction card. Destroy the non-villain target with the lowest HP. Out of Blue Beetle, Green Death, and Applejack, that is Lucky Break. No targets destroyed this way, he moves to the other battle zone, which I would have been okay with because then he couldn't play cards. All right, he deals each target five energy damage. Ugh, okay, let's hit the heroes first. This is gonna be rough. Now, let's see, he hits her for six, hits Progeny for five, that gives him his token, so he's gonna flip next round. So he takes out this Thrall, each villain target regains two hit points. So he almost takes out the Locust. We just need to leave one person with Void Soul so that there's no inevitable devastation happening. Damn. Okay, that could have been worse, and then those don't actually take any damage, they're at full. We don't get anything. And there are Scions in both of the things. Okay, so our goals right now, we have to kill the Aeon Locust, we have to kill Sanction, and we need to leave somebody up with Void Soul, preferably somebody who can take out all of those Aeon men. That might be a job for Applejack. Blue Beetle might be able to do it. Yeah, I think I'll risk it and have him try. Okay, hey, how about the Emerald Deathmobile? <laughs> I can't believe he made it through that round. Destroy an environment card. Oh right, he needs to discard a card. And Fauna's not over here, so he's not getting any benefit from it. What's the next thingy? Yeah, he might as well take that. The final champion at the end of your turn, if there are more hero targets than non-hero targets in this battle zone, flip this card. There won't be for a while, but we'll see. Destroy an environment card. We're gonna get rid of that one, cause it sucks. And then yeah, custom steric. Deal a target one projectile damage, you can use a power now, and then deal a target one toxic damage, and if it has two or fewer HP, destroy it. You know what? He'll go ahead and take out both of the Aeon men, just on the off chance that Oblivion decides to hang around. Draw a card. There are one, two, three hero targets, and four non-hero targets, so that doesn't happen. I actually forgot to do this last time. Venture Brothers are moving over here. I'm gonna play Machine Gun, Placeable Clones, discard the top of my deck, and use Machine Gun, deal up to two targets, three projectile damage each. I'll hit Sanction, and I'll hit Oblivion. He's important to kill. Then do I want to discard two cards? I think actually I do. Draw a card. All right, let's see. This is worth getting, so each hero may deal themselves two psychic damage. Let's see, that's everybody but Fauna, which is unfortunate. Well, no, he's gonna, that's right, he's gonna move over here at the start of his turn, and then Blue Beetle will move to the other place. So it'll be fine. It'll be fine! So let's see, Venture Brothers will hit themselves for two, Applejack will hit herself for two, because she's gonna die anyway, and we'll have Blue Beetle do it as well, because he's got the HP to spare. All right, whoa -ho, we're halfway there. We just gotta do it before the Venture Brothers die. Okay, start of her turn, let's see what we got over here. Orchestrate the Void, hmm. That could be helpful, but probably not. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna hear him use a power. Mecha Knight, beat up on Sanction. The Iron Pony, Applejack deals target four melee damage, beat up on Sanction. And then I want to set the trend, I think. Let's say I got two one-shots and an ongoing. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Return to the lair. Draw two cards. I can discard any number of cards, and he heals that much. And then we'll drop that for a hit point. That's fine. And then she draws a card. I wish this had a way to put cards under it. Okay, Fauna. He moves before the start of his turn, so before that card goes away. Let's see, he's gonna take this mission because he can do it, although he's probably just gonna die, but that's fine. Then, at the start of your turn, discard your hand, destroy all gifts, and destroy this card. So, destroy his hand. Three heroes can draw cards out of literally everybody. Green Death needs it. I'm actually gonna give one of them to Blue Beetle, just because he's likely to stick around. One to the Green Death, 
and one to Applejack. Well, no, she's not going to stick around, so one of the Venture Brothers. Destroy a gift, which unfortunately does nothing, and then destroy this card. And then he'll use the Infinity Cannon. Draw a card. Let's see. I didn't actually read this. Orchestrate the Void. Whenever you cause another player to play a card, use a power or draw a card. Add a token to this card when there are six tokens on the card. Flip it. So that's actually three tokens that he just got. Draw a card. Five damage to Sanction. Draw a card. Man, you know who needs that? Freaking Green Death needs that, because he's got ammo cards. End of his turn, he could play a card. Hey, yeah, he will heal three and draw three. And then, yeah, we'll have somebody else play a card. Let's see, can you get set up? Oh, waiting into the fight. That sounds good. First time Green Delta is dealt damage each turn. Green Death deals the source of that damage to melee damage. Yeah, that'll be helpful. That's another token on this card. Friggin' fantastic. Okay, Blue Bortle. Let's see, what's our mission? Over here, cards discarded. They had a token to this card. Hell yeah. Of course, mm, no, he's going off by himself. Use a power, gain 2 HP, increase the next damage up here by 2. Play a card. That sounds useful. Yeah, we'll play that hover pad now. And at the start of your turn, you may discard a card. If you do, use a power. What's his actual power? Draw a card or play a card. Yeah, okay. Discard a card. Maybe I should have taken that mission. Whatever. And then use his base power, draw a card or play a card. He'll draw a card. Now you can play a card. All right, fine. Blue Beetle deals a target 2 melee damage, and then he deals a target 2 melee damage. Let's take out two of the thralls because they do a lot more damage. Blue Beetle versus a horde of Aeon men and a creepy shadow on the wall all by himself. And then his only other power is reduce the next damage dealt to Blue Beetle by three. That sounds like a really nice idea. Okay, draw a card and that's it. Whew. Okay, Castle Underbites. Uh, I shuffled the deck so I don't know what's coming up. Propaganda Campaign. Each player may not play more than one card, use more than one power, or draw more than one card. Each turn, start the environment, turn, destroy this card. That's fine. That's really fine. Okay, Scion card. Scion with lowest HP deals the hero target with the highest HP, 5 melee damage. That's only 2. Wonderful. And then he hits himself for 2 and 2. That's... Actually, that's fine. Going it alone against Void Soul, not a bad idea. On the other hand, he also takes one, two, three, four, five, six damage from the Aeon men. That's fine. He's fine. It's okay. He's got more than one hit point. He's fine. I forgot to do that last round. Okay, one energy damage to all hero targets except Blue Beetle. He soaks it. Yeah, Fawn is probably going to die before we get Orchestrate the Void, which is unfortunate because it's a really good reward. Yeah, and then he hits it for two and it heals, so that doesn't matter. Whatever. Okay, security bot. Rogue robots. Restore five HP to one sealed module denied stack. Well, there's only one and it's at full. All uncontrolled seal modules are immune to damage. Okay. Start the environment, turn this card, does three energy damage to the highest HP hero target. Okay, so if we can get rid of that one way or another, that'll be useful. It's not really a priority though. End of the environment, turn one hero may use a power. Let's see, Fauna's got nothing to do with power. Well, that's not, that's not true. What do we want to do right now? We want to kill Sanction because we can do that. Green Death will use Custom Steric, ping the robot for one, and then use his base power, hit Sanction for one, and destroy her. When she is destroyed, each... I think it's back up again. This is the end of Dr. Venture's turn. Let's see, okay, so Seraph, he'll up to three targets, three irreducible damage each. He'll hit Oblivion. He'll hit Baron Underbite. We got him to deal with too. And he'll hit himself, because he's cool like that, which lets me play Conjectural Technologies, put a token on a card, draw two and discard two, and put it on top of a hero deck. I'm gonna give it to Fauna. Oh yeah, and it also destroyed that. Now for my power, I do a little bit of damage. She does have a plus two. Yeah, okay, plus two damage. I will use a book to play Hate Cart's Method, do four to Oblivion, and two to Baron Underbite, draw a card. Oh yeah, at the start of her turn, I should have Reclaimed the Mecha Knight. I won't take anything else, Back, that's fine. And that's it. Start of his turn. Somebody can use a power. Hey, how about you, Twilight? She's got a thing. Remove a science token and she deals target five energy damage. Cool. He will play mascot merchandise. Power. Infinity Cannon. Temporary Tomoko. And then five energy damage. Draw a card. Oh gee, look at that. What fun. Everybody draw a card. Literally everybody. Nope, I guess I'm finishing the rest of this by myself. Somebody can play a card. Gee, actually, yeah, Battlefield Analysis. That'll be good. One hero target deals target two energy damage. How about you? Two, three, four. 
and everybody heal too. And then you can draw a card and use a power. Discard a card. So let's see, somebody can draw a card. So we put two cards in their trash into their deck. Increases next damage by one. Reduce the next damage dealt to, uh, I'm gonna say the Virtuous of the Void. That's it, okay. Start of your turn. Destroy this card, select up to three targets, increase damage levels of those targets by one to the starting next turn. That will be Oblivion and Baron Underbite, because I don't have anything else this up here, so I can actually see the damn thing. All right, and then, let's see. Hero deals target one melee and zero radiant damage. Uh, yeah, okay, son of green death. One, two, put that plus one, three, four, melee, five, and then zero, one from Terror of the Underworld, two from the plus one. Okay, I need to do that every round now. Hey, one, two, punch. Three and three. I will discard a card and draw a card and draw a card. Okay, we've gotten him exactly halfway down in one round. Here's hoping we can keep that up. Did I not do the Uray? I did not. Make that more than halfway. In the environment, turn the player with the fewest cards in their hand, may draw a card and use a power. Fauna, okay, draw a card. I'll use Infinity Cannon. <laughs> I'm going to play Biting Retort. He will do Oblivion, two melee damage, and six energy damage. Oh, wow. There are no Scions here. Everfree Forest. We actually got around to ya. Timberwolves, they do nothing. There are no Scions here. Oh, I forgot the Oblivion card plays. Okay, end of Active Adventure's turn. The Abyss stares back, which then plays Absorb Energy, deals each target three energy damage, but we won't get any damage thingies. Reduce it to Cursor. He hits back for two, three, because that plus one wasn't there. End of Twilight's turn. Same thing. Yeah, she protects herself. He hits back for three. Well, he actually should be four. He takes out Seraph. Uh, he takes out the Virtuosos. That would have messed everything up. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, one of those actually goes to this thing. End of Fauna's turn. Ugh, everything's all messed up, as usual. Embracing Smite. Two hero targets the highest HP, three infernal damage each. Hero character card dealt damage this way destroys one of the no, hero cards. Okay, two hero targets. 18, 22. Okay, darn. He does not have anything to destroy. She'll just drop a book. End of Blue Beetle's turn, where everything is as it should be now. Focus of power. So, yeah, he's not there. So, somebody needs to go take care of him. And then all the other stuff happened. Everything's fine. Okay, inevitable destruction. Counting down. Now he plays a regular card. Tier 3 reality. Deals each target two energy and two psychic damage. At this point, she's going to protect him from the first hit. He'll take the second hit and hit back for four. Is it four or is it five now? It's five now. Oh, he hits a Venture Stein. I forgot about that. That would have been before the plus one, so he'll just do two damage and two damage. All right, was are those other ones? Kills each target. Okay, so Wonderbite should have six fewer HP. Gee, maybe Oblivion will take him out for us. That would be nice. One Devastation token. And then deals each target three infernal damage. This is going to hurt. I think we can take him out, though. Oh, shit. Except Dr. Venture goes down. That's a problem. That's a big problem. I wish now that Fauna could take things out of his own trash, because we need the Virtuosos back. Oh, boy. That's it. Okay, he gets replaced by Jonas Venture Jr. And we begin again. Okay, nobody's moving. Start of his turn he heals one this is probably gonna be his last round oh yeah and he picks a target to deal him two melee damage well that doesn't actually happen because cursor protects him from it so that doesn't matter time for the emerald death mobile uh there are no environment cards to destroy all right so his power is going to be custom steric yeah it deals itself three damage so okay he's doing one two three for the first one Two for the second one, increase to four and three, so that's seven. And then it destroys both of those, oh, which means Fauna can draw four cards. Oh, hey, he got the Chronoist back. Fantastic. And then for his third power, he will use Emerald Deathmobile, each non-hero target. So three to him, and takes out Baron Underbite. Oh, that's good. That's real good. And I was wrong. There was a card to destroy, which is unfortunate, because we could use that. Each player draws a card. Okay, that was his power, so he draws a card, and then, thank goodness, we reveal the last card in his deck. It's an ongoing, thank goodness. Everybody playing ongoing. He ain't got none. She ain't got none. Yeah, Hero Worship, definitely use that. Overcharge. I'm gonna put this on the Emerald Deathmobile, although it might not last. All right, that was his turn. Start of Rusty's turn, we're gonna claim Seraph, because that will help with the whole don't have anything in play thing. Military funding. I hope it's something good. Gardo. Oh no. That was the exact opposite of what I wanted. Well, at least it's something that will be immediately helpful. His power, put a science token, draw a card. If Gardo dies, I don't care. End of my turn. 
Yeah, remove science token, redirect four energy damage at Oblivion. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Before that happened, summon Scion. Put the bottom card of the Scion reserve in this battle zone. Play the top two cards that you have on my deck. You know, that could be a lot worse. And all we get is a vassal and a thrall. There's only four Scions left. And we get Voss. Oh, no. No. You did not just do that. Fuck. Oblivion's got 11 hit points left, you piece of shit. God damn it. Okay, well in that case, I'm going to return that 5 HP and hit Voss for 4. Except I can't, because he's got 8... Dev oh, shit. Oh, fine. Fine, we'll just do this the hard way. Seraph is dealing irreducible damage, so he'll hit Voss for 2. He'll hit the Vassal for 2. Actually, 3, because of Cursor. And he'll hit himself for 3. And accidental mutation on Twilight. Golden Oak Library and Friendship Castle. Mutate her into having a castle. And now we play a card. Oblivion deals each target 2 energy damage. Move any heroes dealt damage this way to the other battle zone. No heroes are moved this way. Move Oblivion to the other battle zone. Okay, everybody take 2. Cursor protects herself. He takes one and hits back for two, three, four, five damage. Oh wait, no, no he can't, because I think that happens first. Because so, everybody's getting moved. Everybody is getting moved. Nobody's retaliating to shit. This is not looking very good. I want everyone to die before we kill Oblivion so that they at least have full health. That's a devastation token. So, start her turn. She moves back there. Does he do anything? Yeah, if you would win the game, flip this card instead. When this card is destroyed, move from the game. Whenever this card destroys a Scion and three Devastation Tokens, the Inevitable Destruction card. X on this card is the number of Devastation Tokens on the Inevitable Destruction card. Reduce damage dealt to this card by X. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP, X plus one energy damage. Then this card deals another Scion, X minus one energy damage. If there are no other Scions here, deal that damage to Oblivion instead. So he's going to kill Oblivion. We may as well just ignore Oblivion and focus on killing ourselves so we get some fresh heroes for the Voss fight. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, Green Death needs to play past the mantle. Dr. Venture is fine. Twilight needs to die. Fawn is gonna have to die. Blue Beetle should probably die. Do I have anything that will let me let others play cards? Well, actually, uh, Fauna might not need to die. Okay, yeah, Fauna's not gonna die. So Twilight and Blue Beetle, we need to get as close to dying as possible. All right, so Element of Magic, power number one, Friendship Castle, going for Alicorn Wings which hopefully are not under my character card. That would be stupid. Okay, good. Shuffle. Power number two. Mechanite Ultra Strike. She'll hit herself for five. Draw a card. All right. He moves over. Start of his turn. One hero may use a power now. Mechanite Ultra Strike. Hit Blue Beetle for five. He's going to play the Chronoist, because why the hell wouldn't he? Power. Infinity Cannon. Oh, I wish this was irreducible. Okay, I'm going to play Listening to the Wise. Draw four cards. Destroy a gift. Question is, which one do I want to destroy? Probably temporary time ago. Okay, so, Fauna regains 3 HP. I can play a card. Mid combat, nap. Fauna may deal a target 2 melee damage. Uh, let's take out that Thrall. And then, yeah, 5 damage is not gonna do anything. Oh, except maybe kill Twilight. Twilight is done. I've gone through two heroes. Okay, draw a card. End of his turn. He can play a card and another player may play a card, except, oh, he's all by himself. He is going to play... I knew there was one in there somewhere. Then he can draw a card and use a power. I don't think he will. All right, Blue Beetle moves back up here where the action is. All right, now hang on. First end of his turn. Deals each target 200 damage. Move any heroes dealt damage this way to the battle zone. Dink. Aha, he didn't take damage. Foss doesn't take damage, and Twilight is replaced by Masked Warrior Eero, the last of my heroes in this game. I could use one of his seven variants, but I'm just going to use the main one because, well, at this point, you're not watching the live stream, so you've already seen him, you already know that he's got an arted deck, and none of his variants are fully arted yet, so I'm just going to do the base version, and we'll see how well the common Rider holds up to the end of the world. That was at the end of Fauna's turn. Okay, start of Blue Beetle's turn. Okay, increase the next damage dealt by hero by two. He plays one two punch and hits himself for four and two and dies. This is a really stupid strategy, but we're going into this with future Blue Beetle. I don't actually know what he's supposed to be called. Okay, this is our team for fighting Grand Warlord Voss in his final form. Castle Underbite, sentries. And the only people up here are Blue Beetle, Mass Warrior Hero, and Fauna. They deal the highest HP hero target to irreducible melee damage. Probably hero, yeah. All right, except for that, this stairs back. Oh, he's up to 10 tokens. Oh, another focus of power, that's bad. Need to get rid of that somebody. I don't know if anybody can. Ah, yeah, that'll do. 
Okay, so then that happens, and now it's Voss's turn. Sign with the lowest HP deals the hero target with the highest HP, 5 energy damage, and the hero target with the lowest HP, 4 projectile damage. So that's 5 to Eero, 4 to the lowest, which is Fauna. That's unfortunate. That's really bad, actually. I thought he would be able to make it through. End of the villain turn, he deals the hero target with the highest HP, 11 energy damage. I think that's Blue Beetle at this point, yeah. Then he deals another Scion, 9 psychic damage, but he actually hits Oblivion instead and takes him down to 1 because he couldn't just finish this off easily. Frick. Okay. Everfree Forest. Uh, Shadow Bolts. So let's see. Timberwolves hit the two non-environment targets the lowest HP for two melee damage each. That is Lucky Break, who will soak it, and the Emerald Deathmobile. Okay. Deals a target three melee and three fire damage, and I will actually just kill the Shadow Bolts because I don't need their damage. Thanks. Oh, that's right. I was going to have him play past the mantle, and I forgot. Shit. It's all going to fall apart in the final hour. End of this villain turn of Oblivion is in this battle zone. Add a Devastation token to the inevitable destruction card and play the top card of Oblivion's deck. Nothing happens. This counts down. Plays a card. Heals each target two energy damage. And that moves the heroes. You know, I can have him hit the hero. Or no, I guess he does the damage first. So actually, he should probably be dead now because you can retaliate against this. Um, and he doesn't hit any of them. He hits hero. All right, they're all moved. Uh, and then he moves, which is unfortunate, because he hits everything for three, and he's there with all those thingies. Okay, shit. Well, okay, no, this is fine. She'll protect Lucky Break, and then Green Smoke Cloud to turn that three damage into killing the Timberwolves. Whew, I keep forgetting he's really slippery. Blue Beetle might get to go. Ah, Fauna's almost dead. Okay, that's it. Green Death's turn. He heals one. Picks Oblivion, who deals no damage to him. Pass the mantle. May use a power. Gee, I'm just going to use the custom Sterix. In fact, I'm going to use the custom Sterix and kill Oblivion. Unfortunately, we do not win the game. So, Foss flips. This card flips to the side, it regains H times 10 HP. So he's back up to full. Then move it to the Oblivion play area and remove the Oblivion booklet from the game. Ruin it, kill Voss. Oh, what a fuck nugget. So he's back up to 90 hit points. I've never done this before. I think the one time he came out, I just rage quit. This card counts as Oblivion. Note that he has the Oblivion villain keyword. He's immune to his own damage and environment damage. He's not a scion. If this card is destroyed, you win. Congratulations. A player's hero is incapacitated. That player does not get a new hero. If there are no active heroes, you lose. Game over. So this becomes a regular fight that you have unfortunately tacked on to the end of an Oblivion fight. Whenever an environment target enters play, it deals each target four melee damage, then add a Devastation token to the Inevitable Destruction card, and this card regains nine HP. At the end of Oblivion's turn, move Oblivion to the battle zone with most hero targets, then this card deals each hero target six irreducible energy damage. Oh, this is not going to be possible. All right, and he's here with these ongoings, so we need to get rid of them. So that was power number one, power number two, custom steric, Dink. He hasn't been dealt any damage, so his base power... Or actually, that's not a dink. That's two damage. And his base power will be zero, one damage. You may shuffle your trash into your deck. If at least seven cards are removed from the trash this way, the Green Death regains five HP, and you may play a card. Or, I'm sorry, then remove the Green Death's character card from the game, and replace it with an available variant Green Death character card. So this is actually removed from the game. Goodbye, son of a Green Death. Hello, Green Death Extreme. Or do I want the other one? Green Death 2084. That might actually be useful. All right, shuffle trash into deck. Heal five. Important. All right, I've used most of his powers, so his base power now is Deadly Doctor. Until the end of your next turn, whenever the Green Death would deal toxic damage to a hero target, they regain that much HP instead. Green Death deals a target one toxic damage. Who needs to heal? Fauna. Of course, it's to a hero target, so he can't increase it. Draw a card, and then end of his turn. Oh yeah, we do still get to do this. One shot. Everybody may play one shot. We need to one shot the shit out of Voss. High speed chase. No environment cards destroy. One shot. Um, conjectural technology, science token, draw two, discard two. Hurricane strike, deal to two targets, two melee damage each. Mid combat nap, good gravy. It's, hey, one two punch. Whew. And then poison gas pellets for five damage. That's a big pile of damage we just did, and that was the end of his turn. Okay. Start of your turn. Aha! Destroy an ongoing card and an environment card. Yay! And you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna play Violent Malfunction, destroy an invention, and if you do, destroy an ongoing card. Yay! Dr. Ventures saved us. Deal each non-hero target to fire damage. His power unfortunately becomes useless. 
He'll draw a card. Seraph will do his thing. Three damage to Voss. Three damage to himself. I feel like playing an energy sword. Question is, let's see, he's not going to want to use it. He's got stuff to do. All right, he's going to play the energy sword on himself. Oh wait, I can play helper. Ha ha ha. And then at the end of my turn, remove a token from him, draw a card, and deal two damage. Ha ha ha. All right, at the start of his turn, he will reclaim Mecha Knight Ultra Strike. I'll play Color Warrior Kick, even though it won't do anything. Cho Henshin, go red, hit Voss for one, and draw a card. Ugh. At least he's not playing cards every turn. Start of his turn. One player may use power now. Here's a good idea. He's doing energy damage. We're going to make Fauna immune to energy damage. Yeah, Fauna's immune to energy damage. Play Handy Distraction. A target other than Fauna deals a target to projectile damage. Green Death, because he'll do three. Power, Infinity Cannon. Mid-combat nap. Five damage. Draw a card. End of turn. You and another player may each play a card. Mascot Merchandise, which might actually not be a great play. Who could do anything with a play? You know what? I said I was going to use the energy sword on Euro. We're going to do that. And then draw a card. Use a power. Mascot. Two cards in your trash. Plus one. Draw a card. That's it. I'm going to give it all to Blue Beetle. Well, except for the shuffle cards in. So his next damage is increased by two. All right, that's his turn. Start of his turn. Each hero regains a hit point. Hell yes. Or, hmm, I don't know. No, yeah. Each hero regains a hit point because we'll be taking lots and lots of damage. Tactical deployment. When a non-hero card is play, you may destroy this card. If you do, you may draw a card, play a card, and use a power. That's almost a stuntman card. And then we will use silent partner. Discard cards on top of your deck to discard a card with a power in it. Use the power in that card now. Way the bug. Blue Beetle deals a target three melee damage. Good enough. Did a bunch of damage to him. Could be better. Okay. Oh, yeah. Kind of forgot about those guys. Vengeful Tyrant. There's nobody here. End of the environment turn. Baron Underbite deals the highest HP hero targets some damage, and nothing happens there. No Scions. Everfree Forest. This could be a problem. Weather Everfree. When this card enters play, deal each target two lightning damage. So let's see. It's when an environment target enters play. Shoot. Everybody take two. She'll protect Lucky Break. Oh, and I forgot to increase his damage by two. That takes out the mascot merchandise. So it wasn't a waste. Start of the environment turn, shuffle the environment trash in this card into the environment deck. Okay, no villain. Boss's turn. Tear through realities. Oh man. Deals each target two energy and two psychic damage. Added devastation token. Okay, we're gonna get devastated next round. We gotta see if we can do 55 damage to him. Otherwise, it's going to be pick one hero and save them with this power. Right, so everybody's taking two and two. Okay, Cursor cannot protect Lucky Break or the car, so she's gonna protect herself and only take two. Lucky Break goes down. He takes one and one. Hits Foss back for three. This gets taken out. It hits Voss for four. Helper goes down. He's immune to the energy damage. Chronos is going to go down. Oh yeah, I can destroy this card, which means Fauna regains a hit point. That's important. Draw a card. Play a card. I'll just play away the bug and use a power. You know what? Yeah, I'll just go and use that and hit him for three. Okay. End of Oblivion's turn. He moves to the, yeah, with most hero targets. He deals each hero target six irreducible energy damage. Oh my god. Okay, we're going to green smoke cloud that away, which, yeah, just goes right back to Voss and he's immune to his own damage. Cursor goes down. Seraph goes down. Chronoist goes down. Ah, and the blue beetle is killed. Well, at least I remembered that to have that card go off, this could definitely be better. Yeah, nope, okay, that's it. Green Death. <sighs> Voss hits him for two, he hits back for three. I'm gonna return to the lair. Draw two cards. I'm gonna discard everything. Discard seven cards and he heals that many. Power. Sterix for two and two, and then he'll use his base power and... oh jeez. Everybody's doing real bad. Hit Eero for one and heal him. Draw a card. And he has nothing to do at the end of his turn. Oh, actually, at the start of his turn, one player may use a power. Eero wants to Cho Henshin purple. Smack Voss for one. Okay, start of turn. Each player draws a card. Good, good, good. Okay, military funding. Let's see what I get. Biobots. Power. Give that a token. Draw a card. And then he'll remove a token from it, letting Green Death use power. Steric, Steric base. Healing Eero again. Can really only take one more round of that. I'm gonna play Catalyst Crush. Deal a target to melee damage, and because I'm purple, a target dealt damage that way cannot deal damage until the start of my next turn. Huh. <sighs> For his power, he'll use the Energy Blade and do 5 damage. Draw a card. Oh, and at the start of his turn, what could I have done? One here, I'm going to use a power. How about Mechanite Ultra Strike? 5 more damage. Okay, start of his power, he's going to make himself immune to energy damage. Well, no. He's going to make the Green Death immune to energy damage. Because if anybody's going to win this, it's him. I need Jim's old hat. Okay, power. Mascot. 
handy distraction, handy distraction. So I can give somebody a plus one damage and then have them deal a projectile damage. So we're gonna have both of those go to the green death. So he's gonna do a grand total of six damage. Fantastic. And then we will shuffle two cards from trashes into decks. Those are gonna be the rewards. He can't get Chronoist back, but we can get back the rest. Seraph and Helper. And then I'll have both of them draw cards. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, draw a card. End of his turn. He can draw a card and use a power. He'll draw a card and then play a card. How about mid-combat nap? And do five damage. Okay, 10 hit points to victory. One here may use a power now. Uh, Mega Knight Ultra Strike, five damage. All right, the environment can fuck itself. Yep, it can fuck itself. This environment does some stuff. Cockatrice. This card deals a non-environment target lowest HP, one psychic damage. A target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage to the start of the environment turn. I think that might be Voss, because that's not HP. Yeah, that's Voss, who's immune to it anyway, but that's fine. No villain turn, Voss turn. All we gotta watch out for is if no damage was dealt this way. Move the countdown token one space towards zero. Which is weird because what happens when it hits? Oh wait, start of turn. Start of turn, 12 tokens. The Everfree Forest is erased off the map. We're gonna swap that out for the Principality of Verandava. And then he deals everybody, oh wait, no damage. <laughs> target with the lowest HP deals each non volant target other than itself two energy damage. Character cards dealt damage this way are moved to the other battle zone. Well, that's going to be everybody but Fauna. And what's the lowest? Eight. Oh, I didn't see you there. So, that's it, huh? I'll bet you're wondering what happened. Well, the game was a victory for the heroes. They ended up defeating Rainet Kelvoss in the final hour by the skin of their very teeth. Specifically, it was Fauna and the Green Death down to the very wire. As for the stream itself, I honestly don't know. It seems like streaming took up too much memory or something so that it moved at one frame per 20 minutes. And once the stream died, which I don't know why that happened, but I'm glad it did because it means there's some video, everything was fine except for the fact that out of a nearly five hour game stream, I had maybe three hours of raw footage, which I've boiled down into this hour plus video that you've hopefully not skipped entirely through, although I... I really wouldn't blame you if you did, I would too. So what did we learn? Well, not how to play Oblivion, that's for sure. MVPs were Green Death, Fauna, and Buffy. Fauna seemed a little overpowered, but I think that was because I was using the Infinity Cannon incorrect. He's amazing when he can play three cards a turn, which he wasn't supposed to be doing, even if he hadn't been though. I mean, between Virtuos of the Void and the Atlantean thingy that he got, you know, that would have been an extra power and card play per turn, and that's nothing to sneeze at. That was pretty damn good. There's definitely a spectrum in concerns with the other heroes, like Xander and Guntar had a really difficult time. They went down pretty quick without really making any kind of contribution. The ponies did about as well as I expected they would. You know, they showed up, they did their thing for a little bit, and then they got chewed up and spit out. That was fine. And then you have heroes like the Green Death, who is remarkably resilient, and Dr. Venture, who actually didn't do too badly. I was, I was kind of surprised by that. I do regret a little bit that I wanted to go through all the variants of a hero before I switched to a different hero. Could have gotten more heroes into the fight if I hadn't done that, but, you know, what's done is done. As for the stream itself, you know, if you showed up, I really appreciate it. There were five people at one point, and that is way more than I was expecting, which sounds really pathetic. I don't, I'm sorry. And uh, I'm sorry it didn't turn out better, but it seems like if I record for more than about an hour and a half at a time, it OBS craps itself. I don't have the kind of system requirements necessary to be able to stream, and that's one of two reasons why I don't do it very often. So I hope you all enjoyed this very special and very horrible fiasco. I don't expect I'll be doing it again, and that's it. Remember that Tabletop Simulator, the Reavers Oblivion and Vengeance DLC, Adelpha Phages Archives, Walker's Workbench, the Hunter D13's Anomaly, and, and Stone Jesus' Repository, and Overtime Comics, and fucking, like, everything that didn't even show up in that thing. Thing is not a license grade in the game product. Please support the official release and flip.